Mr. Arande, this is your car. This is what I had to do. If you look here, you can see I have written on there uh, the thicknesses of each of those um, shims. If you look at this one, this little round piece on top comes out of this thing called a bucket. The bucket holds the top of that shim in its place and uh, each shim is a different thickness and whether it's too thick or too small your taplets or your lifters would be either not lifters your valves we either making a slappy noise if it's too loose or uh, you'll get the valve hot and uh, drop it in a cylinder and ruin your engine if it's too tight because each metal has to expand at a different rate and when that happens it, everything ends up getting too tight and locked up too much tightness is too much heat the more heat it starts damaging metal parts so just wanted to give you a little bit of what we're doing the whole car is like we took the whole top end apart I was all excited that it was done and we had it all together and when it ran it ran good the only thing is it had the tapping sound so what we did was uh, took uh, measurements of the shims that you have and then you can see how I wrote the measurement on top of it and the, the ones that say okay means that those were the measurement that it had to be and they didn't mean to be switched around so you see how many got switched around there's very little okay ones <laughs> so I'm going to give you a brief description print these deals up what I did was I found a PDF on valve lash adjustment on your car for the Lexus ES 300 and uh, it gave some diagrams and then it also gave uh, the this is the front of the car this is what the front head this is the rear head uh, everything's pointed to the passenger side and uh, I thought of using one of those uh, drawings and uh, doing a snap pick of it and then my daughter somehow sent it to our printer and I printed up big versions of these so that I can write on them and keep track of what it is that I'm doing and see I got one two three so this one says valve lash that means the valve clearance the space between the cam and the actual shim and I got all the measurements here all written down in order and I kept track of everything so a lot of them that were okay, I marked them as okay, says don't move that one because that one is the exact size it needs to be. And I got a couple over here, okay right there, okay right there, and that one's okay. So all those don't have to be moved, oh, on this one, all those don't have to be moved because they're at the size that they need to be. So after I came out with the clearance measurement, I had to come out with the pulling those shims out, which... But that's not the way you're supposed to do it. That's how I did it so I could do it faster. Uh, there is a tool that wraps around the, the cam and somehow pushes on the edge of this piece right here. It pushes down on that and you're supposed to spin these with that notch spot crossways to the front. It's probably towards the middle of the head because that's the easiest access to it. And then there's a little tool that goes in that notch that pries these up and then they slip out when you get a magnet to pull it out. And uh, so what I did, I just ended up pulling all the cams out after I got my clearance measurements. And then once I got my clearance measurements, I went and bought that deal. It's a micrometer, uh, digital micrometer. So it measures the thickness of each shim. And I wrote all those measurements here. You can see uh, the different size measurements that there are. And these were all the original positions of each shim. This may sound a little confusing, but I just want to make a video so I can explain it to other people. And then my third one, before I get to my third one, after this, I wrote down all the measurements of the original position of these shims. What I had to do is find a, a formula to convert 
the space of this, the thickness of this, and uh, I'm going to show it to you on my whiteboard. Right now there's nothing on it, so I'm going to get it ready to so that I can video it and explain it. Okay, now this is the formula I had to study. This point zero 0.08 is what the factory calls for, for your intake valves to be adjusted at. Or that's how much clearance is between each uh, shim and cam. This is your exhaust uh, size that it needs to be for your exhaust side because uh, the exhaust side heats up, metal expands, and it, it'll run out of room pretty quick. That's why the exhaust is a little bit bigger than the intake. So I looked online and I found different ways of figuring this out. And uh, I saw this on a video. New shim thickness, recorded valve clearance, specified valve clearance, old shim thickness, and this is what the formula is. A equals B minus C plus D. And if you write it down, this is how it's going to look like. This is what the uh, old valve clearance is. This is what the valve clearance was supposed to be from the factory. This is how much is missing. Uh, that's how much more extra gap there is. So we're going to add that with the size of the used shim that we have now, which comes out with the answer of the new shim we're going to add in. So I had to do all that math. So I got four pages of math. That's the right hand exhaust for six of them, right hand intake for six of them, and so on. Left hand intake right hand exhaust. That's a lot of math. I did that last night, man. That, that made my brain sore. I haven't did math like that in a long time. But I learned it, figured it out, and I can do it again. So it doesn't limit me to uh, only doing head gasket jobs without doing the valves. <laughs> so now I can do the valves. So over here I'm going to show you how this formula works. Okay. Right here it says current valve clearance and we're pointing at this number. That's what, when I checked your car it had this number on there. This is what it should be from the factory, factory valve clearance. So or if you look at it, I mean obviously you can see there's for six from eight is two, so you got two thousandths missing. So clearance loss, two thousandths. So we added the, the thickness of the shim that you have in there right now and we came out with this answer new shim 0116 so that's the new shim that we're going to stick in there and your old one is at 0.118 so we need to get it a little bit thicker or yeah thicker because uh, we lost valve clearance so what I did was at the end of all these answers right here what I did was I had my daughter print out a third sheet. All the answers, and I did each one of these shims one by one. I didn't want to mix them all up, make them random because you'll get lost. So I pulled one at a time, measured the shim, put it back on the bucket, stuck it back in. And I wrote the answers in the, these would be the lobes of the cam. So I wrote the answers in the lobes of the cam. You know, just to show where they go. So all these shims are where they go correctly. And if you look at my original sheet, a lot of those numbers, I have the exact same... Oh, no, this is clearance. I'm sorry. A lot of those numbers, I had those numbers already in other spots. So what I did was, you can see where it's uh, 116... 111, 114, these fives don't matter, you either round it up or, yeah, round it up, uh, 115, and uh, since I had already the some shims with this thicknesses, with the new results I got, other places needed the same thickness. So I took the 120 out of here, and I stuck it over here. So now that lifter's good, or that lifter spot's good. And then, you know, and, and so forth, you know, I did, I went and re-set new placements on these shims from this one, 
where the, I already knew where they were at, and I made this one where they knew where they had to go. So now I got these outlined in green, saying that this whole head has the shins placed exactly where they need to be. And uh, so that head's done. I'm gonna put the cans back on it. Double check my clearances. As long as my clearances meet my factory specifications, they could be out maybe a half a thousandth to one of thousandths, but it would be okay. But these ones, you can see where I started running out. I found uh, shims to fill in these spots on these numbers or where they go, but this one, I didn't have one of those, I didn't have one of these, and I wrote those sizes here on the, these are the sizes I had left over from the old ones. And none of those matched were in these red placements where they had to go. So that's how I did it. And then, oh, and what I did was I transferred my my old notes for uh, valve shim uh, thicknesses. And I on the old notes, when I had the old notes, I transferred the old notes to the actual engine itself. I wrote OK on the shims that I knew, knew that I didn't have to move and I wrote the thicknesses on each shim where they were at in their old places and then when I went in to start looking for them uh, I took the 120 out of over here and I stuck it over there where it belonged when the 120 was over here the valve was way too tight so that allowed me to stick a, a another one that 114 is not right we're waiting for not new parts because I I'm missing five of the sizes that I need so I pretty much saved you two thirds of what it would have costed to five shims costed uh, somewhere around close to 50 bucks uh, thanks to my cousin over at uh, Lexus and uh, uh, he gave us a pretty good deal on them and uh, we got those ordered and they'll be in tomorrow we can't reassemble this until tomorrow but I just wanted to give you a kind of a general idea of what a pain in the butt uh, job I ended up having to go into after replacing those head gaskets. <laughs> I had no idea that those valves were all different thicknesses and uh, uh, they didn't go into the same order that they should have. So now we know that they're all in the right spots except for the five. Uh, we're looking at one, two, three, I think four, and then five over here. Those all have to be changed because they're not the right thicknesses. So there it is. I uh, hope you get as much fun out of this car as possible. Please take care of it. This thing was ran into the ground, and I got it running the way factory wants it to run. You're going to notice the difference when you get it. So I uh, uh, hope everything turns out great. We're going to double check the thicknesses once the cams are on. Make sure that we're in parameters, and you can have your car back. All right, John, we'll talk to you later. There's Puppy Chow keeping me company.